You might not be aware of this really cool feature uh, here in iBooks, but Kindle does the same, of working out what's symbolic in a, in a book. So here I typed the search glasses. It gives me every search, but it also tells me how many results there are in the whole text, 51. And I did a similar thing with specs, and we find that there are 31 text results for that. In other words, these references to specs and glasses happen, happen much too frequently for them to be casual accidents of description. They're obviously intended to be symbolic. The most obvious symbolic element of um, the spectacles or glasses is that they reveal Piggy's wisdom and, if you like, they carry Golding's message through the novel. For this reason, Golding um, juxtaposes Piggy's glasses. He put on his flashing glasses and looked down at Ralph. Not them. Didn't you hear what the pilot said about the atom bomb? They're all dead. So Piggy's voice is the voice of reason. He's worked it out. He's used logic. Whereas Ralph hasn't. Uh, Ralph is thinking that people will know where they are and come to rescue them. However, the specs are also associated with power, and a power that can be dangerous, as we can see when the glasses are used to start a fire. The flame, nearly invisible at first in that bright sunlight, enveloped a small twig. Notice how it starts small and not too dangerous. Grew, was enriched with colour, so far it's quite a positive description, and reached up to a branch which exploded with a sharp crack and we can see the immediate change towards danger. Uh, this is immediately uh, followed by Piggy crying out for his specs, and we see here that this is an abuse of power. So Piggy is on the side of reason, and his spectacles represent not just his wisdom, but his ability to do things for the common good and prevent this kind of violence. Next, we find that Piggy's glasses are to correct his short-sightedness. And the idea of wisdom is that he can see clearly, as in wisely, when he has his glasses. So now I'm going to hand over to Primrose Kitten. And she's going to look at the physics behind this. If Piggy can't actually use his glasses to start a fire, in terms of the physics then we know that uh, Golding is deliberately bending facts in order to promote uh, his symbolic interpretation. When we see things, the light comes in through the lens and then the lens changes the path of the light so that the light focuses on a single point in our retina. People that are short-sighted, their lens focuses the light in front of the retina. This can be corrected by a diverging or a concave lens. The diverging lens will actually make the light travel out a bit before it gets to this lens in the eye, which means the light will focus in the proper place on the retina and we'll actually be able to see an image. When someone is long sighted, the lens focuses the image behind the retina. We can fix this with a converging or a convex lens. And what this does is it takes the image and it pushes the light in here and then in here again. Excuse my inaccurate drawings. So that the light will be focused on the retina and we'll be able to form an image properly. Now this is important to know because if Piggy is short-sighted or long-sighted, um, we need to draw very, very different ray diagrams which will result in different things happening. So if in your exam you're asked to draw a ray diagram, this is the sort of structure you'll be presented with and these are the rules that I like you to follow when you're drawing your ray diagrams. So here, effectively, what they're trying to do is to make an image of the sun on the ground. So I have my sun here, and we are going to draw the lines for a diverging lens, which we need for short-sightedness, um, to see where the image will actually end up. So following these rules down here. 
So the first line we need to draw, and obviously you would be doing this with a pencil and a ruler, is from the top of the object through the middle of the lens. Second line is from the top of the object straight across to the lens and then up and away. And you're going to need to be tracking this back through the principal focus. So it's going to be here, going upwards. So in the exam, you would actually join up your um, ruler with the top of the lens where the line crossed and the principal focus, and then you would draw your line up here and then a dashed line backwards. Obviously, I can't do with the pencil or in here through the principal focus. Then we need to do the same from the bottom. So it's from the bottom through the middle of the lens, then from the bottom, straight across and again we need to be going through the focus here so tracking with your ruler line up there and then the line will continue like this track it backwards and where the two lines that have come from the top so this one and then this one that is going to be the top of our image and the two lines from the bottom so this one and this one and this one tracking back that is going to be the bottom of our image so our image would actually form here so if this is the Sun if this is uh, Piggy's glasses and then the ground is over here we would actually be forming an image this side of the glasses so it would be impossible to set a fire using glasses with short sightedness which would be a diverging lens. For a converging lens which is for short sightedness this is also a magnifying glass. Um, the ray diagrams look different but if you follow the rules that I have for drawing ray diagrams you should be absolutely fine. So the first rule we draw a line from the top of the image down through the middle of the lens from the top of the object straight across and then down through the focal point on this side and here we need the lines to continue and because these are both coming from the top of the object this is going to be our top of object here. Then we need to do the same from the bottom, so from the bottom of the object straight through, and I'm just going to continue that for quite a long way, then from the bottom of the object straight across and then through the principal focus and those lines are both coming from the bottom so that is going to be the bottom of our object. So in this circumstance we would be ending up with an image of the sun around about here. So we can see here we have the, the sun up in the sky, we have our lens here and then we have an image of the sun forming on the ground which would be able to start a fire. So Piggy would only be able to start a fire with his glasses if he was long sighted. Drawing ray diagrams is really, really complicated, but if you practice it enough, you will have no problems if this comes up in the exam. Fortunately, I have loads and loads of worked examples on my YouTube channel for you. Jack breaks Piggy's glasses and then steals them, as we see here. Uh, and Golding decides that the glasses uh, should be broken. That's really important to him because he's suggesting that Piggy's wisdom... Uh, can't be taken by power. In other words, um, violence is always wrong. And he criticises this violence uh, through the symbol of the glasses. He's also suggesting that when you take something by force, you ruin it. It's never the same thing that it was before. It's always broken. When Ralph and Piggy... Uh, go to Jack's part of the island to try and reclaim the specks, uh, we see a further development in the symbol. Piggy points out that they need the specks in order to make fire, and Ralph can't remember this. He just realises he needs to get the specks back. Ralph's losing his capacity to reason, but Piggy keeps him on the straight and narrow, as it were. He keeps him thinking like an adult. Uh, this doesn't last, though. Ralph... We've come to say this. First, you've got to give back Piggy's specs, uh, but he can't remember why. 
if he hasn't got them, he can't see. And this is ironic. So, of course, physically, uh, Piggy is nearly blind without his glasses. He can't see. But in the metaphorical sense, he sees very well through his wisdom. Uh, we realise that Ralph is childlike when he says, you aren't playing the game. It's as though Ralph has become more childlike, uh, just as Jack has. But Jack's childlike impulses have taken him towards evil, and Ralph's childlike impulses have taken him towards doing the right thing. It's finally up to Piggy to whisper that uh, Ralph needs to mention the fire again. Again, Golding gets Piggy to reassert his adult view, his reasoned view, his wisdom, again symbolised by the glasses. We may be used to seeing the conch as the most powerful symbol in the novel, but uh, I'd like to suggest something different is happening here. The fight between Jack and Ralph that leads to Piggy's death and then to the fire that nearly kills everybody in the island uh, comes about over the glasses. It's the theft of the glasses that causes Ralph to call Jack a thief. And it's this accusation that eventually uh, forces them to uh, battle hand-to-hand and eventually allows Jack to throw his spear at Ralph with the intention of killing him. So the tragedy of a novel looked at this way isn't a political battle between democracy and dictatorship. Uh, Much more important is the battle between uh, wisdom and lack of wisdom. Wisdom, symbolised by the glasses, uses power for the common good, and... Uh, A lack of wisdom uses power for its own sake, and that power is destructive, eventually turning on itself. The power of the glasses creates the fire which nearly kills them all. Without his glasses, Piggy challenges the boys with a reasoned version of truth. Which is better, to be a pack of painted Indians like you are, or to be sensible like Ralph is? Which is better, to have rules and degree, or to hunt and kill? Which is better, law and rescue, or hunting and breaking things up? And you can see in the um, repetition of the same beginning of uh, each utterance, and the rhythm that he's got here, he's speaking like a real orator, uh, like a politician, if you like, uh, persuading a real audience. Piggy's view is an adult one. But because it is a reasonable one, it's rejected by the boys. The irony here, of course, is that without his glasses, though almost blind, Piggy therefore sees more clearly than any of the other boys. Without Piggy's metaphorical glasses, the other boys have a distorted perspective, as we see here from Roger. In his perspective, killing becomes easy. Below him, Ralph was a shock of hair, so he's no longer a person, he's just the visible part of person, his hair, and Piggy is a bag of fat. Without even his glasses to identify him, he is instantly disposable. In fact, uh, this metaphor suggests that he should be disposed of. Uh, In Roger's eyes, he is disgusting and refuse. And Golding does this deliberately at the moment when Piggy's glasses are denied to him. He's making a point about how we see the world and each other. And finally, although we might ridicule Piggy for his um, unrealistic science, if you remember his plan to uh, make sundials so they could tell what the time was, uh, when the time on the island is irrelevant, uh, ultimately the final word rests with Ralph and that we see that Piggy is the true wise friend. Um, His wisdom is personified by the glasses. That is the symbol that begins the novel and ends it. Golding seems to be suggesting that if we can see the world clearly, then there is hope for us. When we do see the world clearly, we understand the darkness of men's heart, this idea that we're all capable of great evil, 
And when we recognise that that's something we're all capable of, then we can overcome it. And now, when you look at the end of the play, you have to ask yourself just that. Uh, do we become wise and survive, or do we seek survival through becoming evil and more powerful? I'll explore this further in a later video on the ending of Lord of the Flies. Good luck in your revision. If you found the video useful, please subscribe.